Kate, my bride, let's go for a ride in my newfangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed meter steel, it's my newfangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now, you know, sometimes I don't understand why there are so many criminals in the United States. I mean, after all, in this country, I mean, there are so many legal ways to steal. You know, various American, you know, authors and comedians have made their witticisms and jokes about crooked politicians and lawyers. And let's face it, those jokes would not be funny if there was not a shred of truth in them. American history has had its fair share of shady folks working just above the law. And one of the most notorious ones in American automotive history was a lawyer by the name of George Baldwin Selden. He was an intelligent man that liked to tinker, but didn't much like school, so did just enough to get by. I know the feeling. Uh, born in 1846 to a New York family of lawyers, he also studied law just enough to get past the New York bar. But his heart wasn't really in it, so he also studied some engineering and tinkered with mechanical stuff in his spare time. He had a particular penchant for internal combustion engines and made a few attempts to make one. Now a couple of things happened that got him really going. Early in the 1870s, he briefly knew the Duryea brothers and saw their earliest attempts at making a car, which at that point was not particularly successful. Not long after, he went to the Centennial Exposition of 1876 in Philadelphia. One of the various techie things on display was a new type of internal combustion engine designed by a certain George Brayton. The Brayton engine was a huge beastly thing that was the first to successfully use an engine principle called constant pressure combustion. Unlike a standard gas or diesel engine where the fuel is put in front of the piston and set ablaze, the Brayton engine, using constant pressure combustion, burned fuel constantly in the firing chamber and just directed the explosive results to the cylinders. It was way too big to use in a motor vehicle, but it did get young George thinking. Applying all of his engineering, business, and legal knowledge, Selden designed a version of the engine small enough to power a vehicle as well as a vehicle that it could drive. Note that I said designed one, not that he actually built one. And design in hand, he filed a US patent for the motor car in 1879. Now Selden was a patent lawyer, and when he first filed his patent, it was a simple patent for the specific design. But George realized that since nobody was making cars yet, I mean, even Benz and Daimler in Germany hadn't built theirs, this was his golden opportunity to own an entire future U.S. automotive industry. He began to rapidly applying amendments and additions to his patent to make it more and more inclusive. For some 16 years, he modified the working of his patent and through his legal prowess, was granted a US patent for the internal combustion powered four wheeled car. And according to his patent, granted on November 5th, 1895, in the United States, you could not build a motor vehicle with four wheels and an internal combustion engine without his direct consent. And being a generous man, George would gladly give you his consent, uh, for a fee, of course. And so as far as he was concerned, he was set up for life. You could not build a car in the U.S. without paying him his for the privilege, despite the fact that he himself had never built a working car. Selden was good at the whole lawyer thing, 
so that no one got away from paying him his stolen due. Selden was now wealthy and needed some help. He tapped the shoulder of a successful businessman, a Mr. William Whitney, to run the business side of his new concern, the Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers. Well, he handled all the legal stuff when someone tried to infringe on his patent. The arrangement between these two was simple. Every time a gas-powered car was built in the United States of America, Selden and Whitney shared a royalty. Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Lookmobile, Packard, every car that rolled out of the factory was money that went into their pockets. Of course, he couldn't cover everything in his patent, despite the 16 years it took him to finally shape it up. Cars powered by other things were not covered, and so many manufacturers simply made steam or electric cars to avoid paying him his royalties. Also, cars with other than four wheels were also immune. For nearly two decades, his patent strangled the growth of gas-powered cars in the United States until this patent was finally overthrown in court. Selden was not a popular figure in his day, and when Henry Ford finally beat his patent in 1911, Ford became a national hero. But that is a tale for another episode. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History. We'll see you next week. Peace.